absolute pleasure to welcome in Jets forward Mason Appleton to the show. Mace, what's up? How are you? And congratulations on that big win on Tuesday night. Thank you. I'm good. Uh, just enjoying my off day, uh, hanging out around the house, did some hunting yesterday. Didn't, didn't come up with anything, but some of the guys got some deer. So that was uh, good to see. And yeah, like you said, you know, reminiscing on that good win we had over Dallas the other night for first place. Good vibes around the city right now. Good vibes in the chat for Jet fans. And it really does seem like there's really good vibes around the team right now. Uh, how much fun are you guys having on this run and, uh, you know, opening up the newspaper and seeing the Winnipeg Jets at the top of the Central Division? Yeah, it's been it's been really good. I think, uh, you know, we got off to a, a solid start. I think we were winning games, but we didn't feel like we were playing our best hockey yet. And we weren't stringing you know, two or three games in a row together that we loved. And I think right now we're really hitting our stride and we're playing our best hockey. And obviously there's still a ton of room to grow and space to get better, but we like where we're at in the standings. Obviously it's early, but we're a damn good hockey team and we're showing that right now. You know, um, it, it was really fascinating. I mean, this entire season has been interesting. I mean, the biggest off season change, of course, was the coaching staff and Rick Bonus coming in. Um, and then, of course, unfortunately, Bones goes down with COVID and misses a good portion of the first few games of the year. You know, you guys got five of six on the road. Um, you got a chance to see just how brilliant your goaltender was. Um, and, you know, to a man, guys said that he didn't really like the way that those games went. We'll take the results, but there was a lot of work to do. Take us back to coming back off that road trip before this three-game homestand the message from Rick Bonus and what you guys were working on and how you were able to, from my opinion, elevate your play game after game leading into what was um, one of the best games we've seen start to finish from the Winnipeg Jets in a long time, Tuesday in the first place battle against the Stars. Yeah, uh, you know, we left that road trip, obviously, with a lot of points on it, and that and that's your goal. Every time you go on the road, is uh, just be over 500. That's a good road trip, and we felt obviously we achieved that but at the same time we didn't like how we played at all like we went to la we got worked in the beginning of that game found a way to come back win we went to arizona we didn't love how we played in that game found a way to win in overtime and then we went to vegas and and we got dominated frankly uh holly buck played an unbelievable game and you know we also had a chance to win that game you take it to overtime they scored five seconds left but we we knew there was a lot there was a lot more out of our group uh individually we felt that you know there was a lot of us that we weren't playing our best hockey and we needed to be better for the team Connor Hollybuck was a stud and you know he was probably the main reason that we were we were winning some of those games but when Bones got back and he finally got healthy we kind of had a we had a good little team meeting and we and we talked about things we need to clean up and uh be better at and then I think that's why you saw us play our best hockey the other day uh we, we have a sharp, laser sharp focus and we know what we need to do and we need to do it for all three periods. And when we don't do that, we're in tight games, we lose hockey games. And when we do that, we can be a really good team. And I think we showed that in uh, you know, a dominant win over Dallas. They score one goal and then we get on the gas and, and we fill the back of the net from there. I think we we're very happy with that game overall. And uh, we've got to keep building on it because it's a long season and you got to rack up the wins early and find yourself in that uh, good playoff picture around Christmas time so you can you know, keep keep going forward and keep uh, preparing for the postseason. Well, and, you know, we were talking before. I mean, this was a, a real challenging schedule to start the season. And you add in the loss of a coach that, you know, was trying to instill a bunch of new systems and new ways of doing things around the Winnipeg Jets. And, you know, not only did you survive that, but you ended up in a really, really good spot, Mason. Um, but I, I have to ask you about Connor Hellebuck. I mean, You've played with him for a long time. I mean, is this the best you've ever seen him play? And, you know, to a man, when you have a goaltender that's doing what he's doing for your club night in and night out, what does that do to the confidence level of a team um, knowing that, you know, no matter what happens, you got a guy that's probably going to keep you in it and there's always a chance to win? Yeah, he's been he's not unbelievable. Uh, he's been so consistent. It's probably – a level of play that not many people can can remember him at. That's not a knock on him at all. I'm just saying that's how good he's been. Uh, when we've had a couple off nights, like I just touched on that LA game, like he steals the show. Uh, we go into Vegas and he and he has 40 saves and he has you know I'd say a do, close to a dozen really good ones. So he gives your team a chance to win every single night. And I think that you can almost 
you can almost fall suspect to that knowing that, you know, if you're not on for a period, Bucky can bail you out. But I think obviously that's not the mindset we ever want to have, but it's great knowing that you got an absolute brick wall behind you. And that if you do make a mistake or you are off for a couple of shifts that Connor can bail you out. So, you know, he's the backbone of our team and he's uh, the best goalie in this league. And, you know, he's going to be a reason we uh, win a lot of hockey games this year. Uh, Mason Appleton's with us from the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, you know, obviously you'd love to get Nikolai Ehlers back, but when a top player like that goes out of the lineup, it opens up an opportunity for somebody to move up. And you have been that guy. Uh, what's it been like playing with Shifley and Kyle Connor? Um, how, what sort of an adjustment is that from the role that you usually had playing with Adam Lowry for so long to, you know, two of the most offensively talented players? And how much fun has it been to get that sort of a run with a couple studs like uh, your line mates? Yeah, it's been it's been a blast. I think, uh, you know, going from Laos to those guys is, is a bit of a change because with Adam, we're more so relied upon to, uh, you know, shut down other top lines and then create our offense from there. And, uh, you know, it's a tough job to shut down the best players in the league. And I think, you know, Adam's still done a really good job at that. And then, you know, I jump up into that top spot with, with those guys. And not that my game changes, but I think they're just a little more offensively because, you know, you're playing with some of the best, most skilled players in the world. So I think, you know, last game, the Dallas game was probably our best game as a line where we were, you know, clicking through the neutral zone, playing fast, playing strong, and just making little plays to each other all over the ice. And I think that's the direct result of those two goals. So it was, uh, it's been a blast playing with those guys, and they're obviously very lethal offensively. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's some fun. It's some fun times out there with them, and we obviously got to take care of our end of the ice. And then from there, create our offense and, uh, you know, nights that we score and don't get scored on, we should like the result after the game. Well, I know Rick Bonus said it, and I think everyone in the building saw it. I mean, one of your best games is a Winnipeg Jet, and, you know, you got into some of that offense. I mean, that pass that you made to Mark Chifley for the first goal was just phenomenal. But I want to ask you about the goal that went in against you guys, and Rick Bonus talked about it, didn't particularly like it, left that line out, and you guys bounced back, not just with one, but started basically an offensive explosion that had you guys off to the races. Uh, what does it do when a coach gives you the confidence to stay out there and try and you know make up for a mishap in your own end and the confidence that it gives yourselves and the team when you're able to uh, do what you guys did Tuesday night after going down one nothing? Yeah, it was, it was almost... A, a fluky goal in a sense where Neil was kind of playing the puck down and then we all thought or all read that we were going to, you know, jump offensively and before you know it is tapped over and in the back of our net. So it was like a more of a frustrating goal against. And then from there, uh, obviously you should hear shifts over when you get scored on, but he left us on the ice and we, we liked a lot of our game up to that point. So we knew we were going to, we were going to make him pay. And it was what, 20 seconds later, we put one in the back of the net just to even that up. So that was, that was huge for our line. And then, you know, just a couple shifts later, we scored again. So I think it was just a matter of time that game until we popped off for a couple. But yeah, to have the to have Bones trust us in that sense and leave us back, leave us out on the ice is, uh, you know, it means a lot because it it shows how he believes in our line and that we can, uh, you know, we can come back and we can bounce back when we give up one like that. So I think that was, uh, you know, it was a good learning learning experience for our line too because, like I just touched on, taking care of the puck in our D zone and making the plays to get out of the zone successfully generate easy offense uh that goal off the rush we had to take that toe goal that came from uh one battle in the corner that you know we made simple plays all the way up the ice and then we just found the open seams to tap it in the back of the net so that's just uh that's just how our line can create offensive uh offensive chances and you know the more we defend better the more more chance we're going to get and the more goals we're going to score mason appleton's with us from the winnipeg jets first place right now Day off today, practice tomorrow, and then Calgary and Seattle on the weekend in some late games for those of us here in Winnipeg that'll be watching it. Um, Mace, you got the jacket afterwards, you and Sacramento Linen. Um, how cool is that to get that, especially after a win? And everyone's in chat is wondering, like, do you take that home? Do you wear it for the next couple of days until you give it out to the next game? No, I'd be funny. I should, I should wear it around town. But uh, no, we usually... Uh... You keep it in your stall and then, you know, we'll go on the road and the trainers will make sure that that, that those jackets come along with us. And then, uh, you know, you'll have it before the game in your stall. So right when the game's over, if we get a big win, you'll know uh, who you want to hand that out to. But yeah, we haven't been wearing it around yet, but uh, you know, that'd be, that'd be funny. I think maybe you got a good idea going there. 
<laughs> hey, people would always notice. Hey, wait a second. You won the jacket last game. Get a lot of love on the yeah. streets. Well, listen, I'm sure everyone is right now with the way things have gone so far and a really exciting start to the season. And uh, this is more of a big picture question. And listen, I don't want to talk too much about, you know, what maybe didn't go right last year. But from your perspective, having been here for years, returning to the team last season, mid mid year in trade from Seattle, and now to the off season that you guys have had, what you built in training camp and where you are right now, how different is the atmosphere around the team, the um, the togetherness of the unit? And, and maybe if you can talk about the effect that Rick Bonus has had since day one with the message that he's done to bring you guys together and instill some new ways of doing things and the results that have followed. Yeah, I think, you know, dating back to the last season, we were kind of on the outside looking in when I got traded back. And uh, then the last few games when we were mathematically eliminated, it, it's tough to play those games. Uh, you know, you, you want to play for the postseason. And that's, that's what your mindset is the whole season. So we, were, we felt as a group that we underachieved. Uh, we've all talked about it 100 times, and that's in the past now. And I think we all had very motivated off seasons because and – that, and that's showing. That's already showing, you know, 12 games in and we're in first place. We, we felt that this group is good enough with what we have and that we didn't need to go and make a, uh, five different moves to, you know, change up everything. And I think Bones has reinstilled that belief into all of us. Uh, when he came, one of his first meetings was, this team is that good. And, you know, he's been in Dallas, and he believes that, you know, we have we're, – we're as good as that team. We're better than that team. And, and he's told us that whether he's just saying that or not. We, we all believe that stuff, but I don't believe he's just saying that. Obviously, he, he believes in this team or he wouldn't have took this job. So uh, – I think Bones does a great job of getting the best out of everyone. He's very personable. He's, you know, he's easy to play for. Uh, you know what he wants out of you, and and then you go and perform that. So there's no uh, there's no gray area with him. It's very black and white, and and you do your job, and he's happy with you. So I think he's done a he's done a great job with us so far, and he's just such a positive voice back there that once we kind of keep getting this ball go ball rolling, it's it's going to be a lot of fun hockey, and you know we're going to be stringing wins together. Uh, Mason, I want to ask you, I mean, uh, Mike, and I know a number of the media people wrote a little bit about the, uh, the pledge that you guys put together, the, you, know, you worked on that. Tell us about coming, like what went into, to making that thing. Um, and, and maybe like, was this a big part of the Banff trip right now? I mean, um, what was the, uh, the contributions from everyone to make that? And uh, why was it important to have that on paper, to have you guys sign? And, um, has that been a big part of the way that you guys have seemed so together on the ice and off the ice so far this year? Yeah, I think uh, when we went out to Banff, we did a lot of different team building stuff and, you know, had some fun together and, and enjoyed our time out there. But at the end of the, the trip, we we really came together and we, we talked about what we want this team to be and what we want to represent as individuals and, you know, how we're each going to be our best selves to then uh, work that into the team structure. And I think that, you know, I think a lot, a lot of that kind of stays within the team and, you know, that's, and we signed it all and that's, that's what we, that's what we stand for. That's what we believe in. And it's just, I think it's a way to say we're, we're one of, one of 23 and we're all pull our own weight and we all are going to be the best version of ourselves for this team. And that, uh, you know, we're flexible, we communicate well and we we're dependable. So I think there's just a couple things in there that, uh, you know, we've kept within ourselves, but it's it's everything that makes up a, a winning culture and a winning program and you know whether that's an in a regular job or or in the nhl it's you know you got to be a good person a good teammate and uh do your part do your job and then that's what uh you know you put all that together and that's when you achieve the team success so yeah it's, it's something that i really like that we've done and you know i think that uh it's been a it's been a foundation for us you know, I remember being out there the first day at training camp and, you know, we're familiar with Rick Bonus and his incredible career in the National Hockey League coaching. Uh, and it just blew me away, the energy that he had on the ice, the way he was communicating with everybody um, you know, on a daily basis as he's bringing that each and every day. And and how good was it to get him back after Scott O'Neill and the rest of the staff had to hold it down while I'm sure it was killing him to be away from the team early in the season? Yeah, he, he brings it. He brings it all the time. Uh you know, he, he's not negative in that sense when he's when he's yelling and screaming and hollering. And it's, uh, it's usually positive stuff, you know, just simple stuff like play fast, you know, uh, move your feet, get on the body, like little little things like that, that just constant reminders. He's he's letting us all here throughout a practice or a game. So I think it just it just drives the pace of our game, the 
you know, we like to play fast. We like to be north south and play a hard hockey game. And I think Bones does a great job of, you know, constantly reiterating reiterating those things. And I think that, you know, it killed him to to be sitting at his house for the first nine or eight of nine games, whatever it was. And uh, it's never happened to him before. You know, he's never had COVID, he's never had COVID before, so he didn't he didn't know what to expect. And obviously, to get him back, and once he kind of felt good again, then he was right back to his old self. So. That was that was great to see, but I thought uh, <clears throat> Arneal did a great job, obviously stepping up, and we won a lot of hockey games with him. But we were all uh, excited to have Bones back on the bench, and obviously he was thrilled to be back as well and feeling better. No doubt about it. I'm sure that post game beer after the game for Bones tasted a little better, considering the way your team played and who it was against, and obviously the result of seeing you guys at the top of the standings on Tuesday night. Mason, uh, one of the cool things that the team and the organization have done this year has done the personal goal songs. And when you iced it on Tuesday night, we got to hear bang on the drum all day, which for people that don't know is the Green Bay Packers touchdown song. You were a proud Green Bay native. I joked on Twitter that this might be true. Might that be the highlight of the entire Packers season, playing it at the Canada Life Center after you scored the goal? What is going on with your football team? I think we could be talking for a couple hours here. Uh... <laughs> It's it's tough. Uh, you know, you lose Devante and and you think you can replace him uh, with some younger talent and you get a good you get a good haul in the trade package, you get some draft picks and you have a, what you believe is a top five defense and our past defense has been really good, but when you don't win games, you gotta look you gotta look at what the problem is, I guess. And you know, we're not in a good spot in the standings and I think that I mean, I, I don't believe you shake it up, and I don't believe you get rid of Aaron Rodgers because I think he's, you know, one of the most talented players to ever play this game, and he's been, you know, he's been good for so long. Uh, I said it the other day, like, I've only seen great quarterback play for my entire life with, with Favre yeah. and Rodgers. So there's there's a lot of people that think Rodgers is the problem, and, I mean, I think they're they're quick to jump ship, but it's how can, how can you bail on a guy that's, that's brought you so much success? And, uh, you know, I, I still believe that he's one of the best players in the game today. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe not we're a playoff team this year, but I think that, you know, I, I believe that the core is set the right way in Green Bay and that they'll get back to their winning ways sooner and later, hopefully. Well, he is back-to-back -back MVP. I mean, that just has made what's happened over the last few weeks that much more crazy to see for anyone that pays attention to the league. Before we go, whenever I get a chance to talk with somebody on the team, especially earlier on in the season, I always like to find out the fantasy football situation within the within the squad right now. Is there a league going? Are you in it? And um, what uh, what's what's notable happening amongst the Jets fantasy league right now off the ice? Yes, uh, we got a tight league going this year. Uh, I've got a good squad. I think I'm six and three right now. Perfetti's got a really good team. I think he's uh, leading the league. Probably a little young luck there, so I'm not sure he's gonna be able to find a way in the playoffs. But uh, Holly Bucks, Holly Bucks, uh, back of the pack. Uh, I think he's got one or two wins, and he throws ten garbage trades at everybody every single week, and we're just done with him in the league, and nobody's doing a deal with him, and we just want to see him lose now. He's been, he's just been too much. So uh, it's good to see Bucky, Bucky at the back of the pack in that. But uh, you know, we have a ton of fun with fantasy. Guys are chatting about it every morning over their cup of coffee and trying to do deals with each other. But uh, we all love watching football too, so. It's been good. You know, you watch Sunday football and you check your lineup a hundred times and then your wife yells at you and says, what the heck are you doing? But uh, it, it's good. We all have a ton of fun playing fantasy. By the way, uh, congratulations on the wedding. You mentioned your wife, uh, obviously a big summer for you. Uh, how's everything going with the two of you here? Kind of starting your life together in Winnipeg and your second time around with the Jets and such a great start to the season. Yeah, it's good. We, uh, we bought a house here in Tuxedo and, you know, we really like it and it's, uh, it's a lot better than renting and having to move your life around every eight months because that can uh, get old real quick. So, you know, we were excited to sign a three-year deal and have a little stability there and, you know, buying a house and, and settling down here has been, uh, it's been a great time so far and we uh, look forward to the future for sure. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll look forward to you uh, roaming around the city wearing that jacket. You can be the uh, you can be the leader amongst the squad to uh, take it out on the streets of Winnipeg. Uh, but in all seriousness, been a real fun start to the season uh the fans are fired up 
and uh, the team's on a bit of a roll. Hopefully you guys can keep it going in Calgary and Seattle on the weekend. I know you'll be ready for those games, especially number two. And uh, good luck this season, Mason. All the best to you and the squad. Hopefully we can do this again later on this year. And thanks so much for popping by today on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. Good talking.